After much testing, I am pretty confident that I can do a pretty informed review of the Clinger Holsters Comfort Cling. Now, this is kind of a, a design that's similar to a product called Sticky Holsters, and it can get confused with that product. But it, it, it's a little bit different, and it, I think it's a little bit more enhanced. But uh, the way I would classify this is basically it's the most efficient lazy man's holster, as I said, and uh, that's really, uh, as the title states, it, it, it's just the lazy man's holster, and it's terrific uh, for me, and uh, basically, what this has allowed me to do is I don't need to worry about getting a belt on. I don't need to worry about any uh, looping a belt through different uh a different loops and on the holster making sure the holster is you know gonna stay the one thing that the the two things that this does very well is it's very you basically just put your firearm in the holster and then you can throw it in your pocket and because this does double as a pocket holster uh, given with this uh, kind of design right here it catches pretty well but also it's a very quick inside the waistband holster as you can imagine, this sticks to your skin very well. It's not going to move around on you just to whatever angle. And then as you go along through the day, this is going to stick to you more and more. And that's what I noticed. It's not really going to stick right away. You've kind of got to sweat, heat up, or whatever, and this will really cling to you. So that's a little bit of a note. Also, another note is customer service. Uh, customer service is a very interesting uh you know, thing from me and warranties, especially. Now, you do have a little bit of a uh, of an amnesty period where you can return this product and you can, you know, get another one. And I actually got another one. I spent it's twenty dollars. It, it, I mean, come on, twenty dollars plus like six dollars shipping. So it's a very inexpensive holster, and it'll work with almost every single stack. And I'll get to that in a second. But I called them and let them know about you know, a pistol that wasn't really fitting right or wasn't uh, doing right. And uh, they sent me out another holster. So basically it's like a $10 holster at this point. Um, and I was using a, I, I, they wanted to make sure that it was working with a firearm, uh, the Sky CPX2. And let me go ahead and get that. Now, unlike a lot of other firearms, this, the uh, Sky CPX2 actually uh, can fit in a single stack holster if you uh, get the right holster, I guess you could say like this. But you'll notice uh, when it goes all the way in, the sights go inside. And if you look on the inside, what's happening is this isn't all the way sewn down. There's a little bit left. And this, is, this was actually snagging on my sights, and you can see I took a file and, and filed down the sights on the edges to try to take away some of the uh, traction that was happening. Because when I would pull out this gun, uh, when I was practicing, it would snag, just like right there, because I typically pull forward a bit. And that could be a training issue, so it could be easily resolved by uh, some people, I guess you could say. Or uh, one option that I was actually thinking of is kind of cutting out... Uh, this area right here and, and being that it's a $20 holster and you know whatever I would just be experimenting since I have two but uh, one thing that I, I was thinking of is actually just cutting this out and kind of singeing the edges so it doesn't unravel here now that would be kind of tricky and stuff like that and it's probably a little more risky than you need it to be but the inside is very smooth and it works very well but again, it's just this profile of sight and the way this firearm is, it does snag on the inside. Uh, but that isn't the case with most firearms. But again, you have a similar design to the uh, Sky. And with the kel PF9, and I'm sure with the P11, it comes into the same issue. Not as much, but it still does snag. And you'll end up pulling the holster out with the uh with the firearm and that's never a good thing but you know if you were to have the uh pistol in like right here where the sights are flush with the top of course you're not going to have an issue and the same thing with the sky but the sky is a little more forward so you're going to have a little more exposed that might not be a big deal for some people but it's just something to consider and even if you were to have it high like this 
it, it, it actually does uh, do pretty well in the waistband and even in the pocket it stays pretty well put um, uh, thanks to the way your body would grip the gun at least uh, from my estimation. Now the, the firearm that I consider to be perfect for these holsters is the Honor Defense Honor Guard. Now I know a lot of people are like why would you like this pistol but one of the features that is really important for us that carry is uh, the sight. Now this sight is very similar to what you would see on like the R51 where it's a reverse swoop like a reverse Novak where you have an edge right here where you can do one-handed manipulations and yes that is important if you get wounded and you need to operate uh, your pistol one-handed or your occupado with your other hand it's not a bad idea to have an option there but it's reverse swoop so when you're coming out of the holster you're not going to snag on garments and stuff like that and that is perfect for this holster now now we we're talking about this i want to bring up that these two holsters are not you know all the same this one actually fits all the way to let the sights all the way in so you can carry deep and usually I carry to where my fingers have a good enough clearance and the sights will go in uh, for the most part so you know that's just a consideration now on this holster uh, it, it's a little tighter fit you can see the trigger guard is already encountering issues right there and it's not really manufactured uh, uh, too consistently but for uh, for the most part, this would still work. It does have a good enough, a good amount of retention, but you can see the reverse swoop uh, that happened here. This was uh, kind of a defect right there, so that is an issue. But going with the Sky, this one created a lot of issues. I believe this was my first one, and this one snagged, like, no matter really what I did, and I was pulling the holster out. And the same thing with the PF9. The PF9, you know, was snagging pretty easily as well. So that is just a consideration when you're getting this holster. If you have that issue, call Klinger Holsters and they will make it right. That's uh, that's one of the big things. That's why I'm so big on warranties. Is you want to give the chance, uh, you want to give the company the chance to make things right and get you your money's worth in the products that you are investing in. So, with all that said. That is a defect. They don't really cover normal wear and tear, but you know that's kind of a hard thing to do. Uh, if you want to get a manufacturer that does that, get a get a Sky. Uh, they they have no conditions. I've sent my uh, I've sent my pistol back several times or whatever, but this isn't really a gun review. But it's just an example of like if you want to go in extremes on warranties. But anyways. You know, that's my review of Klinger holster. This is the best holster, I think, for committing to a daily carry, especially with a single stack, or maybe you get a double stack like the Sky, even though the Sky doesn't really work that well with these holsters. They just snag. But you can, I, I guess you could say, invest $20 and modify it a little bit. But, you know, try a new holster if uh, if your your pistol isn't working that well. But anyways... Thanks a lot uh, for watching, and follow me on my my blog at doitright.org, and also follow me on social media. I'll put a link down in the description below, and also I'll put a link to these holsters in the description below as well. So anyways, you guys have a good one.